In some parts of Texas, cloudy conditions. In others, sunny skies. And in yet other parts of Texas, very windy weather. On the surface map for this afternoon, we can see a storm system moving through Texas. This is the same one that was affecting New Mexico yesterday and moving into the Texas panhandles. Slowly drifting to the southeast, and it should kind of take a track there towards the central Gulf Coast. But we can see that there's not a whole lot of cold air behind this system. You look up to the north, 50s. So that's not much of a push of cold air. And if we look further up north, even up in Saskatchewan and Alberta, just 20s and 30s and even a few 40s. And you've really got to go up to the Canadian Arctic to find the real cold air. And even so, it's not quite pushing into Yellowknife where they've got 10 degrees. So some parts of Canada very mild, others still locked up in the winter icebox. We do have a new weather system coming onto the western coast there. This is affecting mostly northern California and Washington and Oregon. Looks like the front is already past the coastal range and moving into Seattle and Portland proper. Still pretty quiet conditions down there in California, and we've seen the temperatures decrease a little bit. 70 degrees at Phoenix instead of mid-80s like we had a couple days ago. And the dominant weather system is going to be this large area of cold air moving into the Midwest and also this very large plateau high covering the Great Basin and the Rocky Mountain region. Well, let's see. What do we got going on on the upper level chart? Very deep trough off the West Coast there. And a weaker trough centered over Kansas as a closed low. The trough itself extending across the panhandles down into West Texas. South of that, a polar front jet across Dallas right there, 130 knots in that, and the axis of that jet running about like that. And remember, if we use that rule of thumb, going along the jet between the trough and the downstream ridge, about halfway at that inflection point, that's where we would have expect to find the surface cyclone, and the cold front would be expected to go about like that and the warm front down to the south. The surface system probably a little bit lagging what we see there. However, that tells us that the surface analysis does have consistency with the upper air pattern. And another rule that I've not really talked about much, if we plot that jet once again, and we go between the trough and the upstream ridge, put that in red right there, the inflection point, which is located right there along the jet, that's where we expect to find the maximum anticyclogenesis. So pressure rises at the surface or expected there, and that would support development of high pressure. Yep, that's certainly the case there. The highest pressures are found up there near Jackson Hole, but you can see there's definitely a tendency towards rising pressures in southern Colorado. So with this ridge across the Great Basin area, we can expect a fairly nice start to the weekend in Denver, Grand Junction, and Wyoming. And things should go downhill in the southeastern U.S., where we've got that surface system that's going to be approaching from the west. And the polar vortex. Any sign of that? Well, that's actually receded up to the north, the lowest Heights are found up there in the North Pole region, and probably one of the stronger branches of that located across far northeastern Russia. That's typically where we find it this time of year. So any severe cold outbreaks not expected in the immediate future. Across the southwestern U.S., Sunny and mild. However, I can see some evidence of contrails there in Sacramento. That's a sign that the upper level conditions are moistening up in advance of that next system approaching the coast. 
And a look at the plots in that part of the country shows some gusty conditions in eastern Arizona. Remember, we talked about that anticyclogenesis in this area. That's the end result. So we're getting the strong easterly flow into eastern Arizona, and that should hit Phoenix later this evening. Now, quite often, easterly flow is associated with cold air, but it's actually going to be warm this weekend, and we expect by Sunday, much of Arizona will be approaching record highs. Taking a look a little bit further to the east, there's that potent system there in Texas, the surface cyclone, located just northeast of Dallas. They've had the winds shift to the northwest. Looks like the main front running something like this right there. And I think ahead of that, probably a dry line. You can see that 29 degree dew point there at San Antonio with very warm conditions. 84 at Catula, 85 at Laredo, 81 at Del Rio. But only when you go north of there into the hill country, that's when the temperatures drop off and we get into more of a polar air mass regime. So the dry line, I think that's going to be running about like this. And then the warm front, that's going to be it right there, extending eastward into Louisiana and then out towards southern Georgia. So the main Bear Clinic zone, that's it right there. The jet located just north of that. That's the upper level support for this system. And the whole thing will just gradually shift to the east-southeast this evening. And there's how it looks on the satellite loop. You can see that it is a dry system, but there's considerable stratocumulus and mid-level clouds associated with that, just not a whole lot of precip. However, it does form up into a very large comma cloud. You can see the dry slot located right there. That's bringing pretty dry mid and upper level conditions into San Antonio and Austin. And then the warm air advection zone, that's going to be it up there in Mississippi and Alabama. And that's a result of the flow of moist warm air out of the south. In the northeastern U.S., not much going on, but yep, northwesterly flow, pretty much like almost every day this winter, it seems like. There's enough moisture to form some low stratocumulus with gravity waves right there in the mountains of Vermont and New Hampshire. And then you get up further north, and that's where we get some of the bitterly cold air in Quebec. You can see the lakes are still frozen in Michigan and Wisconsin, northern Minnesota. But we're getting into spring, so we should start to see things change. As the vegetation starts greening up, the air mass warms, and we get melting of those lakes. And there's those temperatures, still pretty cold. 20 degrees at Burlington, 33 at Buffalo, 38 at JFK, and 40 at Detroit. Not terribly cold, but, you know, for March it is a little bit nippy. Out to the west, though, you can see we do get into some of the warmer weather. 45 there at Minneapolis with 48 at Chicago. And that's going to contribute a bit to the thawing of those northern lakes. And there's the Pacific Northwest. I did pick out a warm front somewhere in this area right there. Cooler conditions up to the north and down to the south, 60s and even 60 up there at Spokane. But out to the west, cold front moving inland. The winds are pretty much out of the south, even behind that front. And with that being an anafront, a lot of the precip is going to be back behind that. And there's the satellite imagery, classic presentation there. You can see the frontal bands in western Oregon, western Washington. Further out west, the cold advection cumulus out over the waters. Steep lapse rates in the lower levels due to the very cold air, which originated from the northern latitudes, modifying over the relatively warm waters. And then further west, yep, that's the occlusion back there. So in terms of the fronts, occlusion becoming warm front and cold front, pretty similar to what we had there on the surface chart.
In fact, why don't we take a closer look? Now, come on, we got to keep it interesting. So, you know, I'm just doing my job here. But what I want to show you is the soundings back in this dry sector where we have cold air advection cumulus. We're going to also take a look ahead at the front in the high deserts of Oregon. And maybe we'll just check out what's happening within the occlusion itself. Well, here's how it looks on the GFS this hour. You can see that does correspond to an intrusion of cold air. The front, of course, that's going to be on the warm side of the gradient. So yeah, everything's looking good here. So let's bring up a forecast sounding right in the middle of this stuff out over the ocean. And you can see the very steep lapse right there in the lowest four to 5,000 feet of the atmosphere. That's that strong modification taking place over the relatively warm water. You can see that air out there is very cold. If we bring that down moist adiabatically to the surface, that's going to be temperatures of about 38, 39. But the sur sea surface temperature is probably in the 40s and low 50s. Now out over the high deserts, there's what that air mass looks like. It is fairly warm. Not significantly warm, but if we bring that down along a mix of the moist and dry adiabatic lapse rate all the way to sea level, you can see that puts us in the upper 60s to low 70s. So that certainly is a warm air mass. And then taking a look within that occlusion, well, we're probably going to hit some of these convective elements, but it is showing, yeah, a lot of vertical motion within there. So the column is pretty much moist adiabatic all the way up, very low tropopause. And we can try one more forecast sounding and yeah, it looks like we've gotten rid of some of those convective elements there, but still showing the low tropopause there, the very steep lapse rates, and that's commonly what we see in those unstable occlusions. Well, that's all for this week's edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back on Monday for the supporters. And for everybody else, we'll see you again on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.